So we are now in lesson 13 and we will talk about the impact of business on the community and we will talk specifically about the efficiency in perfectly competitive markets. So here is our expectation on this lesson. After going through this lesson, you are expected to discuss the efficiency in perfectly competitive markets, explain the impact of the perfectly competitive markets on society, and lastly, compare the model of perfect competition to the real world markets. But before we will proceed to our lesson, we will have a pretest first. So question number one, it is the maximum amount of, for a consumer is willing to pay for an additional good or service. A. Total benefit. B. Average benefit. C. Marginal benefit. Or D. None of the above. It is the maximum amount for a consumer who is willing to pay for an additional good or service. The answer for number one is letter C, marginal benefit. Question number two, it refers to the change in the total production cost that comes from making or producing one additional unit. A, total cost. B, average cost. C, marginal cost. Or D, none of the above. It refers to the change in the total production cost that comes from making or producing one additional unit. So the answer for number two is letter C, marginal cost. Question number three. Prices in a regulated market economy that's, that has achieved productive efficiency are likely to be blank. A, below average costs, B, average, above average cost, C, equal to the minimum average cost, or letter D, none of the above. Prices in an unregulated market economy that has an achieved productive efficiency are likely to be C, equal to the minimum average cost. Question number four, which of the following statements is not true? A. The market efficiency results from the optimization of resource used to best serve an economy. B. The marginal benefit for a consumer tends to increase as consumption of the good or service increases. Letter C. A marginal benefit is an additional satisfaction that consumer receives when the additional good or service is purchased. Or D. None of the above. So which of the following states, statements is not true? So the answer for number four is letter D. None of the above. It means that letter A, B, and C were true. Last number, number five. Which of the following statements is not true? A. Allocative efficiency means... When the mix of goods being produced represents the mix that society most desires. B. Productive efficiency means given available inputs and technology. It's impossible to produce more of one good without decreasing the quantity of another good that's produced. Or C. A marginal benefit is an additional satisfaction. That consumer receives when the additional good or service is purchased or d none of the above so which of the following statements is not true so the answer for number five is letter d none of the above same with the uh, number four it means that all the statements in letter a b and c were true so again congratulations those who got the perfect score now let's proceed to our lesson and we will talk about the efficiency efficiency in perfectly competitive markets so in the economics the marginal cost of production is the change 
in the total product uh, total production cost that comes from making or producing one additional unit again marginal cost okay this is one of the question of our pretest the marginal cost of production is the change in the total production cost that comes from making or producing one additional unit okay so there are some changes and that is marginal cost of production next we also have marginal benefit this is also one of the question of our pretest so the marginal benefit is the maximum amount for a consumer who is willing to pay for an additional good or service okay this is the amount of the um, consumer that is willing to pay for additional good or service next it is also additional satisfaction or utility that a consumer receives when the additional good or service is purchased so the marginal benefit for a consumer tends to decrease as the consumption of the good or service increases okay so when a profit maximizing firms in perfectly competitive markets combined with utility maximizing consumers something remarkable happens so what so what will happen the results of quantities of the outputs of goods and services demonstrates both productive and allocative efficiency okay so that is one of the remarkable uh, effects okay what is the results the results of the quantities of the outputs of goods and services demonstrates both productive and allocative efficiency so we will talk more about the allocative efficiency so the productive efficiency the productive efficiency means producing at the lowest cost possible without any waste we can have this uh, productive of our production if we have efficient of our uh, production of our goods if we possibly if we will have this um, low number of waste okay because if we have a lot of waste it can add up to our expenses and it can affect our income so the quantity of output supplied is within the production possibilities frontier so in the long run for long, long run of a perfectly competitive markets the price in the market is equal to the minimum of the long run average cost curve so the goods are being produced and sold at the lowest possible average cost okay so to further explain on that the allocative efficiency means that the among the points on the production possibility frontier the point that is chosen is socially preferred so it means that the businesses supply what people demanded in a perfectly perfectly competitive market the price is equally to the margin cost of production so think about the price that is paid for a good as a measure of the social benefit received for that good and after all willingness to pay uh, takes what the good is worth to a buyer so then think about the marginal cost of producing the good as a representing uh, not just the cost for the firm but more broadly as the social cost of producing that good so in perfectly competitive firms follow the rule that profits are maximized by producing at the quantity where the price is equal to the marginal cost thus they are ensuring that the social benefits received from producing a good are in line with the social cost of production 
So I know that this discussion is be, uh, becomes more harder and harder as we have this lesson from lesson, I think starts from lesson 11 up to uh, lesson 18. So it is more on really in the areas of managerial or in the management side. Now let's proceed to other discussion with the uh, with regards to the allocative efficiency. So to explore what is meant by allocative efficiency, it is useful to walk through an example. First is by an assuming that the market for wholesale flowers is perfectly competitive. Okay, Assuming that we sell a flower. Okay. So this is just only an example. So we sell a wholesale flowers and it's, it is competitively, uh, it is perfectly competitive. So our price is equal to the marginal cost. Okay. Now, um, consider what it would mean if the firms... So again, the word firm is the organization or the business in that market produce a lesser quantity of flour. Okay, again, consider what it would uh, mean if the firm or the business in that market produces a lesser quantity of flour. Okay, we only produce lesser quantity of flour. Okay, so we only have a little amount of our products. Okay, I'll change this color to red. Okay, quantity. When you have um, lesser products that we sell in the markets. Now, at a lesser quantity, marginal cost will not yet have increased as much so that the price will exceed the marginal cost that is so what will happen now if we only have uh, if we only sell a uh, low quantity of products so what will happen now the price will become greater than the marginal cost okay if we will sell a lesser amount or quantity of products in the market now, in that situation, the benefit to society as a whole of producing additional goods as measured by the willingness of consumers to pay for marginal units of good would be higher than the cost of the inputs of labor and physical capital needed to produce the marginal good. So again, in, uh, for example, we only have a lesser quantity of products. So the other consumer who needs a certain products are willing to pay for marginal units of goods that would be higher than the cost of the inputs. So they have this willingness to um, to pay the price of the products because they only have this uh, uh, lesser number of quantity of the products. Okay. So in other words, this gains to society as a whole from producing additional marginal units will be greater than the cost. Okay, so that is one of the strategy of the business owner or the managers. So conversely, consider what it would be mean if compared to the level of output at the allocatively efficient choice when we have this um, price is equal to marginal cost. So the firm should produce a greater quantity of flowers and a greater quantity the marginal cost of production will have increased so that okay so what will happen next if we will um if we produce more quantities that the consumer is demanding so we have this kind of you know, as we have discussed of these uh, different forces. So what will happen if we, we 
decrease so the price is lesser than the marginal cost okay so in that case the marginal cost of producing additional flowers are greater than the benefit to the society as measured by what people are willing to pay so for the society as a whole since the costs are outstripping the benefits it will make sense to produce a lower quantity of such goods okay that is why the business owners they will study that they need to um they need to study what is the exact or the right amount or quantity of the product that they will produce okay so it is a great advantage for the manager to have this kind of knowledge so for society again as a whole since the costs are outstripping the benefits it will make sense to produce a lower quantity of such goods so when perfectly competitive firm maximizes their profits by producing the quantity where um where they have this um price is equal to marginal cost so they also assure that the benefits to the consumers of what they are buying as measured by the price they are willing to pay is equal to the cost to society of producing the marginal units so as measured by the marginal cost the firm must pay and thus the allocative efficiency will what will hold now let's proceed to the impact of the efficiency in the perfectly competitive markets what is the impact of efficiency if it is efficient okay that is a positive term so the statements that a perfectly competitive market in the long run will feature both productive and allocative efficiency uh, do need to be taken with a few grains of salt so remember the economists are using the concept of efficiency efficiency in a particular and specific sense not as a synonym for a desirable in every way it's not so for one thing consumers ability to pay reflects the income distribution in a particular society if the certain consumers they have this willingness to pay a product we can study that as well thus a homeless person may have no ability to pay for house for housing because they have an issue insufficient income so expectedly that the homeless cannot able to pay or to buy a house okay so the perfect competition in the long run is a hypothetical benchmark Okay, we studied the ability or the status within the society that is also relevant in the business field. So for market structures as a monopoly, uh, monopolistic competition, and also, also oligopoly, which are more frequently observed in the real world than the perfect competitions. So firms will not always produce at the minimum of average cost nor will they always set price equal to marginal cost thus the other competitive situations will not produce productive and allocative efficiency this is the main reason why we have these different kinds of price or pricing of the products not just only because of the price of the raw materials but these things were studied by the management or the owner okay so the real world markets include many issues that are assumed away in the model of perfect competition including the pollution inventions of new technology poverty which may may uh, make some people unable to pay for a basic necessities of life and also the government programs like national defense or education and discrimination in labor markets and buyers and sellers who must deal with imperfect and unclear 
information. However, the theoretical efficiency of perfect competition does provide a useful benchmark for comparing the issue that arise from the real world problems. Okay, so let's proceed to the valuing part. And we need to reflect on this. According to Peter Drucker, efficiency is doing better what is already being done. So who is Peter Drucker again? He is the father of management. Thank you.